I think the favorite is still that he starts next year on the Knicks. Mm-hmm. I, Me too. I mean, look. Me too. I don't know what's going to happen, but if we just break down, if we break down this situation, Julius Randle is has four years left on his deal. It's not as large of a deal as one hundred and six million dollars sounds. That sounds like some sort of crazy number. Mm-hmm. Uh, his salary next year is probably not going to be in the fifty highest in the NBA. It's going to be like fifty first or fifty right, second, right. depending on deals some other guys get this summer. It's going to be like the 51st or 52nd highest salary in the NBA next year. That's not not going to kill crazy. You. Yeah. They can have Julius Randle and still have room for two Supermax guys. That's that's basically how like the math breaks down on Randle's deal. Mm-hmm. That's not it's a lot of money. It would change my life. <laughs> yeah. <right>. But it's <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's not it's not as crazy as 26 million would have been 7 years ago before yeah. the cap spike. Uh, it's just, it's not an out, it's like 20% of the projected salary cap. Uh, so, so there are ways, there are ways for them to be good by having him there. But that being said, that contract is not looked at as at all something that's a desirable one for other teams to go get. And he's got four years left and, and, and teams don't know what to expect coming off of this year. I think there were a lot of Randall skeptics coming into this season specifically about his jump shot and whether what he did during his MIP season was, was real as a jump shooter. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those people who I've spoken to since are just kind of feeling justified. Mm. Like, okay, we're totally correct on, on, on how we evaluated that MIP season. Like Mm. now he's got this, this long-term deal. I think the years to be clear is kind of more detrimental to his trade value than the money. Uh, but this is kind of the lowest Julius Randle's trade value is going to be. Yeah. And the reason I'm as confident in saying that as I am is because I don't think there's any way, barring injury, I don't think there is any way that he is going to be worse next year than he was this year. Yeah. And every single day that passes by is a day that that contract is shorter. So I just don't see why the Knicks, unless they feel like this is such an untenable situation, that we cannot go through it for one more second that, that having him is such negative value that we just have to get back to neutral. I, I don't see why the Knicks would want to part with Randall at his lowest point when I think they can operate with relative certainty that higher points are going to come. If someone is willing to just absorb Julius Randall's contract this off season, probably willing to do it next off season um, or unless they make some, maybe they make some huge swing for some big time player and massive roster renovations come and they say, well, Randall doesn't fit anymore. We just have to, you know, Rudy Gobert becomes available and they're like, we really want Rudy Gobert. Mm-hmm. Julius Randall can't play next to Rudy Gobert. We got to find a way to get off of Randall so that Gobert can actually fit and, and be Rudy Gobert and this roster can make sense, you know, something like that, like maybe that, but that's obviously there's a low percentage chance of something like that happening. So I'm, I'm guessing that the best situation is, is you hold on to him. You try to rehab his value. You, you hope that he can be new Orleans, Julius Randall. And if that's the case, then that contract is fine. If he yeah. plays like he did in New Orleans, then that contract is fine. Then you have a good player on a reasonable salary, and that that's okay. You know, I, what I've gathered from his, his time here is that he, he's never been an untouchable player to the Knicks regime, um, but I don't see them selling low either. You know, I, I don't see them selling low. And as you said, he's at his lowest point right now. Although when he signed the contract, I thought it was a good deal. I thought it was a good deal for both sides. The reason why I'm not so sure this is going to be a tenable situation is uh, the stuff between the ears and his relationship with the fans. You know, as I said, as a guy who, who captures that temperature on a nightly basis, the thumbs down thing kind of did him in, Fred. You know, the thumbs down thing did him in. I don't know if you recall, but his wife, you know, went at me and put me at the forefront of, uh, of you know, the, the Knicks fans, you know, resentment towards them and, and blame me for it. And I just feel like, you know, and Julius also admitted it, you know, uh, uh, that it's impacted him, his family, his son and, and whatnot. And I just feel like the way that OB finished this season, I don't see how Julius Randle can make a single mistake on a nightly basis 
without the fans moaning and groaning. Uh, to me, it's going to be a similar situation when the fans started to get tired of Carmelo and hogging the ball. And every time you'd hold on to the ball, you would hear the boos and the moaning and the groaning. I think it's going to be the same thing with Julius Randle. And the, the way at which this coach has refused to play these guys now two years in a row, I don't see much changing in the third year. He wants a rim protector out there. He doesn't trust either one of them to, to protect at, at, at the five. I don't see these guys coexisting, and I think the fans are not going to have much patience for Julius Randle uh, starting off early next season. You certainly might be right. I, I mean, if they come back with a similar front court and it, and it plays the same way, you are definitely right that the fans will react that way. Yeah. I just don't know that that's going to come into the decision-making at the front office. Yeah. I think they're going to try to do what they believe is the best for the long term. I also think that, um, you know, if you end up just kind of giving away, if if it might be a situation, I'm not on the, tra- I'm not making trade calls about Julius Randle. I talk to people around the league about it. I don't know what an offer would look like for Julius Randle. Mm. It might be a situation where somebody says, okay, you want us to take Julius Randle? Like give us two first round picks. That, that really might be what it is. You can't do that if you're the Knicks. Yeah. You're, you're holding on to those picks so you can either have young players or to use them as currency mm-hmm. in, in a deal that isn't just offloading a large contract. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's bringing in it's bringing somebody who you yeah. want. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like Otherwise, you're just back to ground zero, and now you're still a sub-500 team, and you have fewer desirable pieces so i just it's great to say you know it's fine people 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 kind of phrase this in certain ways and Mm -hmm. we do this with every sport every kind of player oh they got to trade so-and-so they got to trade Mm so-and-so okay for what should they trade julius randall for another good player sure i i i don't know that that's on the table i think a julius randall trade probably looks something like swapping him for another undesirable contract. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I don't know what that deal would be. I don't know what's out there, but there aren't that many teams with cap space. And if you want to just send them into somebody else's space, I think considering the fact that all the teams who have space this summer are all teams that are not in a position to where they would want a Julius Randle type player on that kind of money, you know, it's the Detroits of the world, right, you know, right. like it's those caliber of teams. They don't, they don't want a veteran on a four year, hundred plus million dollar deal. They what want, about, what about they want young players. And maybe I don't think Portland's going to operate as a below the cap team though. Mm. Oh, that's, right. That's right, my right. guess. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, they can go well below the cap. Yeah. They can, they could go well below the cap. My guess is they'll choose not to. Mm-hmm. Cause I think, I think they're going to want to keep Nurkic's cap holds on the books mm-hmm. and they also have a 20.9 million dollar trade exception, trade exception yeah, which they yeah. lose if they drop below the uh the salary cap so mm-hmm. so i don't think that portland is going to be a below the cap team that's 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 just kind of my guess mm-hmm. knowing their cap numbers um and so there just aren't that many teams like if portland were a below the cap team i think that makes sense yeah but you know Sac- sacramento already traded for some bonus they got their guy so <laughs> so that i mean i guess like it's like you know, I don't know what the hell the yeah. games are gonna do. Yeah, but who knows? No one's Sacramento, sense. right? They did have three, yeah, exactly. three, three, three point guards. You know, so, yeah, who knows? exactly, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, and so, I just, I don't know what the trade is that you do with Randall that doesn't also bring back something of just kind of equal ire amongst yeah, yeah. Knicks fans. You know, whether it's having to include first round picks or bring back another guy who makes a similar amount of money and, and is disappointed his fan base the same way that Randall has. Mm-hmm. So it's not just like, Oh, you can trade Randall and you can bring back two good young players. Yeah. If you could do that. Great. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't believe that that would be out there unless, you know, if you can make a trade, a great trade, you should always make the great trade. Yeah. Yeah. 